Hello, and welcome to another tutorial video for CSCI 2024, Discrete Structures. In class, you guys have been going over stars and bars problems. And today, I'd like to share with you what I call the stars and bars theorem. It really simplifies these problems, and it really helped me to solve them much, much quicker. So the theorem states that with a set of n elements and r types of an element, there are choose n plus r minus 1 r minus 1 combinations. So at first that might be a little bit confusing, which is why I actually have a number of example problems they're going to work through to show you guys exactly how to utilize this theorem. So our first example, there's a cookie shop that sells four kinds of cookies. How many ways are there to pick six cookies? So first let's find our variables. For n, we see that there are we're trying to pick six cookies. So essentially we have a set of six elements. So our n is six. For our r, we read that there are four kinds of cookies. So that means that our r is four. This means that we have choose six plus four minus one, four minus one different combinations. This equals C of 9, 3, which equals 9 factorial over 6 factorial times 3 factorial, which gives us 84 different ways that we can pick these cookies. So you can see just how quickly we worked through that problem when we knew what variables to pull out. Now, let's work through another type of problem that you might see. How many solutions are there to the equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 11, assuming we're working with non-negative numbers? So again, let's work through finding our n, where n is how many elements we're going to have. So this can be a little tricky to see at first, but if we're trying to add up to 11, we're going to have 11 elements for each digit from 0 to 11. If we have a digit that's greater than 11, like 12, this equation will not work because we're assuming non-negative. So there's no way to make 12 plus some other numbers equal to 11. Our r is how many types of the element we have. In this case, we have three variables and each variable will be assigned a digit, which means that our r is going to be equal to three. And so using our stars and bars theorem, we now have c of 11 plus 3 minus 1, 3 minus 1, different ways to solve this, which is going to give us 13 factorial over 11 factorial times 2 factorial, which gives us 78 different solutions. Now, this type of problem can actually get a little bit harder when we add some certain constraints, which we're going to go over now. So again, we have the same formula, but now we're asking how many solutions there are if x1 is greater than or equal to 1, x2 is greater than or equal to 2, and x3 is greater than or equal to 3. So by setting these constraints, we are actually constraining exactly how much we have to add up to. So if we take 1 plus 2 plus 3, these are the numbers from the problem, we get 6. And so this means that we already have six totally accounted for because x1 at least has to be one, x2 has to at least be two, and x3 has to at least be three. Because 11, which we're trying to add to, minus six equals five, the problem that we're actually now solving is x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals five is how many different ways that we can add up to five. Now, this is very similar to what we just solved. We know that this is our n value and we have three variables. So that is our r value. So we're going to have c of five plus three minus one, three minus one different combinations to solve this, which gives us a total of seven factorial over five factorial times two factorial, or only 
21 solutions now. Another constraint we can have is like in example four. So how many solutions are there if x1 equals three? So no matter what, x1 has to equal three. In essence, this is actually gonna remove x1 from our equation. If x1 equals three, there's no real combinations that we can make with it. It is stuck to being three. And so we actually want to apply this three to 11 as well. And so we'll end up getting x2 plus x3 equals eight is what we are now trying to solve. So we subtracted three from 11 and we got rid of our x1 variable. So now we only have two variables and we're trying to see how many way those two variables can add up to eight. So following our stars and bars theorem, this gives us c of eight plus two minus one, two minus one combinations, which is equal to nine factorial over eight factorial times one factorial, which equals nine different ways. This stars and bars theorem is really helpful in solving stars and bars type of problems quickly. I hope that you guys can use it to your advantage. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.